This video is brought to you by Skillshare. So far, 2019 smartphones that are out are amazing. From the beautiful Infinity O OLED display to the absolute monster zoom camera setup of the Huawei P30 Pro, it's been pretty good, but good is not enough because what's coming next is even better. So here are top 10 upcoming 2019 smartphones that are worth waiting for. Number one, Google Pixel 4. Ah, the Pixel 4, the late comer of the year, the backbencher of the class. This time, Google Google is finally, and I mean finally, stepping up its design from the ugly Pixel 3 XL to a beautiful, hole punch, somewhat bezel-less design. According to the leaked patent files, the Pixel 4 could feature a punch hole OLED design similar to the Galaxy S10 Plus. For the very first time, this year's Pixel 4 is expected to get dual cameras on the back with added wide-angle lens. And also for the first time on a Pixel phone, we're going to see an in-display fingerprint scanner. We're going to get some crazy Google Assistant features, pure Android Q 10.0 out of the box, and better internal specs along with more RAM. Finally, but by far the most exciting thing about the Pixel 4 phones is definitely the camera, so anyone who wants the best photos from a phone camera should honestly wait what Google has to bring with its Pixel 4. Number 2, Galaxy Note 10 Pro. The Samsung Galaxy Note 10 is the next beast in the pipeline based on Galaxy S10 specs but with some monster changes. This year for the first time we're gonna see two Note 10 models with 5G and 4G versions. The best and the bigger version is the 6.75 inch version. It's gonna be called as Galaxy Note 10 Pro. It's hands down gonna be the most overpowered Samsung phone up to date. It is expected that the Note phones will have a brand new design such as a new infinity hole which is said to be slightly smaller than the Galaxy S10 family and the position of the hole is expected to be in the middle. On top of that, the Galaxy Note 10 family will have a new design for the rear cameras on the back so it's said to be in vertical orientation. There will be a huge battery upgrade 4500 mAh for the Note 10 Pro as well as some camera software enhancement particularly a proper killer night mode. There will most likely be super fast charging gains as well, finally a UFS 3.0 storage similar to OnePlus 7 Pro and the Galaxy Fold. Overall, it's going to be a monster Samsung phone. So as of now, if you haven't purchased the Galaxy S10 family, if you are saving up the money, then I think Note 10 Pro is going to be the next big thing and it's honestly worth waiting for. Number three, iPhone 11. The iPhone 11 is this year's Apple flagship with some serious gains. Anyone who's using iPhone 10 or any other previous model, this is the absolute upgrade. Although the design on the front of the iPhones won't change, but the back will have a massive change. For good or worse, it depends on which way you look at it. Apple is going with this big block of camera look, and honestly, in the start, I thought it was super ugly. But now with better renders and leaks, I don't think it's that bad. It's been said that there will be a massive change in the camera this year, which is why we have a huge camera. Apple is finally adding triple lens setup on the iPhone 11 Max and the iPhone 11. We have the Y tele and ultra wide angle lens. Both iPhone 11 models will have OLED display technology. It's also expected that Apple will be including the fast charger out of the box finally and features like reverse wireless charging which we have already seen on the Galaxy S10 family will be making their debut as well on the iPhone models and some battery gains as well according to Ming-Chi Ko. We could see a 20 to 25 percent battery gains on the iPhone 11 whereas the iPhone 11 Max could get a 10 to 15 percent gain. This year's Apple A13 chip is going to pull the bar even higher this time combined with iOS 13. I personally want to see a great camera on the iPhone. Apple needs to step up their game when it comes to low light. I really hope that they should include a proper night mode in order to rival the Google Pixel 3 or the upcoming Pixel 4 when it comes to low light photos. There's also going to be major upgrades to the front camera as well along with faster face ID. Number 4, Huawei Mate 30 Pro. Now there is a huge situation going on with Huawei versus US and Google taking the Android license from Huawei. So this upcoming flagship phone from Huawei might not have the Android you normally see on a traditional Android phone. It could be Android without Google. But one thing that's sure is that Mate 30 will come with some solution. According to some of the recent leak, the Huawei Mate 30 Pro is set to come with a 7 nanometer Kirin 985 chip which is based on the new EUV process which is said to make the chip about 10 to 20% faster versus the chip inside the Huawei P30 Pro. Killer night camera along with this crazy zoom will be making its debut on the Mate 30 Pro. We saw a patent leak that showed a Mate 30 Pro can have a very significant change when it comes to design. It might have a dual display version. If you guys 
remember the Mate 20 Pro, it has a notch that is similar to the iPhone. And looking at today's standard, it kind of looks outdated. So Huawei will definitely going to change the front design of the Mate 30 Pro. And this might be the solution that they will go for. It's also expected that Huawei will put a 3D in display finger image scanner inside the Mate 30 Pro, ditching the optical one, which they have been using for the past two years, along with even bigger battery gains, possibly a 4500 mAh cell. It's hard to comment what's going to happen in the future regarding the whole situation that is going on. Let's just hope that this decision gets reversed and we get to see Huawei Mate 30 Pro with original Android, with all of Google goodness. Number five, Moto Razr. What a time to be alive. Motorola Razr, the flip phone that we have seen in the past, was a huge success and a very widely loved phone. It seems like Lenovo is about to revive the greatness, but with a twist. New Motorola Razr 2019 version will return with a foldable display. It's gonna be a modern flip foldable Android phone with some unique functionality, a covered display to interact with when it is folded. It'll run on Android with flash specs and a really high price point will be there as well. Still, it is cheaper than the Galaxy Fold and Huawei Mate X, so it is expected to cost around $1,500. I'm not a huge fan of flip phones, to be honest, but a foldable display phone, I mean, I am all in. I think it's looking pretty good as far as this concept is concerned, and I would love to get my hands on. Number six, Oppo's breakthrough. It's been said by iSeniors that in the second half of this year, we're going to see some crazy phones and Oppo or Vivo or one of these Chinese brands are up to something and they might bring something really really crazy. They have been doing pop-up camera design for quite some time and now it might be the time to move on to the next challenge which is putting the camera inside the actual display. According to Ben Geskin on Twitter, Oppo could introduce a smartphone with a camera embedded inside the display or having an invisible camera. Something Samsung is working on as well but it won't happen until one to two years. This could just be a prototype phone only to claim the number one title for doing this technology in order to beat Samsung or any other company or maybe they might actually have a proper phone ready for us who knows. Oppo is the king of bezelers. The Find X was hands down one of the best looking phone of last year. Then they came out with Oppo F11 Pro and just recently they released one of the most unique pop-up camera setup design I have ever seen the Oppo Reno phone and now they want to move towards the hidden camera design and seems like it might actually happen. Number 7 iPhone 11R. Now along with the iPhone 11 family we're gonna see the iPhone 11R as well. This is going to be the successor to the iPhone 10R, which by the way was the best selling iPhone in the month of February in both US and UK. It's only logical for Apple to bring this phone back with even better specs in addition to similar internal specs with iPhone iPhone 11 family, Apple is introducing an extra camera along with the same camera design. This lens is believed to be a wide-angle lens. You'll see Apple A13 chip along with iOS 13 with even wider range of colors, improved LCD display. Yes, it's still LCD, but it's said to be improved. It's going to be priced similar to the last year's model, which is $750. Number 8, Note 10e. Now, for the first time, Samsung will be bringing a cheaper or you could say smaller version of the Galaxy Note 10. It is expected to be called as Note 10e, similar to the S10e. According to the leaks, it's going to have a 6.3 inch OLED display with Infinity O design. Again, the position of the hole is expected to be in the middle. We'll see a 4300 milliampere battery. Faster charging speeds are expected as well. But since it's going to be cheaper, it will definitely lose on some key specification compared to the mighty Galaxy Note 10 Pro. We have yet to see what differences will be as far as cameras and other things are concerned between the two Note phones. But one thing that is sure is that the Note 10e will be a 6.3 inch OLED beast with 4300 milliampere battery that is bigger than any of the Galaxy S10 models that are out yet. So I'm definitely looking forward to this phone. Anyone who is saving up money, I think Note 10e, if price right, is definitely worth waiting for. Number 9, Mate X. Huawei Mate X is one of the most anticipated foldable phones of the year with the first to present the outward folding. It's the first ever 5G foldable phone in the world with 55 watts of fast charging. Crazy triple camera setup. I mean, this thing is amazing. It's expected to launch in June, but then again, the issue that is currently going on with 
US will definitely going to affect this product as well. At least it will ship with Android 9.0 Pie out of the box with security updates, but there is no confirmation as far as the Android Q status goes. So again, I hope this decision gets reversed. Regardless of that, nothing can be taken away from the sheer brilliance of this design and bringing something really new to the market. And number 10, Pocophone F2. You guys remember the Pocophone F1 from last year? It was truly a flagship killer with the cheapest Snapdragon 845 processor. For $300, it was a very decent phone overall. With Google Camera, the image performance got even better. So this year, Xiaomi is about to bring the same goodness. They already confirmed that they will be launching the cheapest Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 phone ever in India in the coming days. More details have started to surface saying that it's gonna have a 1080p bezel-less screen thanks to a pop-up camera mechanism. The front camera is set to be 32 megapixel along with a bigger battery as well. We might also see a triple camera setup with a wide angle lens. So anyone who is super tight on budget and wants to taste the best performance similar to a $1,000 phone, then Pocophone F2 is definitely worth the wait. Guys, the next half of this year will be even incredible. And my honest opinion all these phones are worth waiting for and while you are waiting why not learn some new skills from Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes covering dozens of creative and entrepreneurial skills. Explore classes in everything from photography and creative writing to marketing, productivity and more. Premium membership gives you unlimited access of high quality classes from experts working in their fields to help you gain new skills and live your best life. And the best part is that it's incredibly cheap and affordable an annual subscription is less than $10 a month. I've been using Skillshare to learn how to shoot photos like a pro without actually being an expert. In addition to just taking photos, it's also helping me how to tell a story through a photograph, what type of special gear I need and why to shoot in wide angle. As you guys know, I'm a smartphone guy. I mainly use smartphone for photos, but a proper professional camera is still better. So I'm learning everything regarding that all thanks to Skillshare. So what what are you waiting for? Join Skillshare now. The first 500 subscribers to use my special link in the description will get a two month of Skillshare premium absolutely free. With that being said, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.